for today's coloring tutorial. I'm going to be using one of the images from the new Treescape set of digital stamps. This is the little palm tree on the tropical island. I've printed it to about eight centimeters tall, which is around two and a half to three inches. Decide on the size based on what sort of card you'd like to make. I'm going to have the image fill up the entire front of my card, which is why it's quite large. I have also um, drawn a border, I don't know if you can see the pencil, just in pencil around the edges and that's going to give me the guide for where I have to take the colour to. My card is going to be slightly larger than that so I can map the image, um, but that will give me just, as I said, the guide for how far I need to take my, uh, my colours. I have Copic markers so that's what I'm going to be using today. You use whatever colours you want, the technique is pretty much the same. I'm going to mask off a little area um, here in the center with uh, a post-it note and that's going to be my setting sun. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, but first of all, we're going to lay down our first layer of color, which is going to be the lightest yellow. Right, I have my image all set up on a piece of, or a couple of pieces of scrap paper. I like to work on scrap paper when I'm using the alcohol markers, especially when I'm doing a lot of blending because they tend to run through the paper, which is what they're designed to do. And the scrap paper just protects the work surface. You could, of course, use a non-stick mat or a chopping board or anything that you've got. Now, before I actually start doing too much more, what I want to do is extend the island to the edges of um, my square, so the square that I marked off. And that just helps me to define which area is going to be um, water and which area is going to be uh, sky. So I'm just going to take that across. This is kind of the horizon line. It's just a rough line. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but that will just help me to determine where I need to add um, all that color and things like that. Okay, so as I said, we're starting with the lightest yellow, which is a Y double zero, and I'm going to apply a layer over the entire area that I'm planning to color. This will give me a good base. Um, from which I can build up all my other colors. I'm using the chisel end of the marker. Now don't worry that it's it's got streaks, that's not a problem because as you add the layers of color later on, those streaks will disappear. So just fill the entire section with that light colored marker. Okay, so I've filled the entire section. I'm going to apply just a little bit more here around the top of the island and between the two palm trees. This is where my sun is going to be positioned. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more marker to get it nice and smooth. I'm not too worried about the rest of the image because the other colors as I apply those will smooth out those lines, anything that's left behind from the marker. But I just want to get that area nice and smooth and filled with color. Right, so there we have it, that's ready to go. Now all I'm going to do is take one of these little post-it notes, use my one and a quarter inch circle punch and just make a mask for that sun. When you're doing this, make sure you clip out some of the sticky part of the note. So you want it to be able to stick to your image. I want my sun to be just below the horizon, so or just above the horizon, it, as though it has already sort of started to set. So what I'm going to do is line it up in the center where these two palm tree trunks meet and over that little island as though it has already sunk down behind the horizon a little bit. Okay, so just apply it like that. Easy to do. Press it down and that's ready to go. So what that's going to do is prevent any of the next mark that I apply from um, entering that area which is what we want because we want that to stay nice and light in color. All right, so our next color, I've made the table over here. Our next color is the Y13. So this is the next darkest yellow. And I'm going to start this right around the edge of that mask. Now, make sure you hold it down because even though there is that sticky portion, sometimes they do move. And then make sure you're going right along the edge of that mask as well. So you wanna bring that marker right up to the very edge of that paper. So you can get a little bit of a, um, a gap when you're using masks. So just make sure that you're not leaving too much of a gap. All right, so just bring it all the way around. And we're gonna extend it a little bit further than we actually need. 
so that we can blend it with the next color. Okay, so we're blending it in. Now there'll be a, quite a sharp line between this yellow and the first one that we use, which is which is what we want. Now we're also going to bring the yellow down here into our water and we're going to kind of do the reverse. So it's like a reverse sunset down the bottom here and that will be like a reflection. Okay, so our next color is the Y15 and you'll see that these yellows build up in intensity as we go along. Now we're going to leave just a, I don't know, a quarter of an inch of the previous yellow as we work our way around the circle. And that's where we're going to blend those two colors together. So we're going to come under here as well. So to create that reflection in the water. And then we're going to come back with the Y13. So this is the previous color and we're going to blend. So we're going to go over that join where those two colors meet so that we can join them together. So working out into the, bit, the darker yellow and then back into the lighter yellow. That just blends those two pigments together. Work all the way around and we get that sort of radiating um, light and that's what we want with the sun. So it radiates out from the sun. Do the same here in the bottom. This will be the reflection as I mentioned. And then we move on to the next color, which is the Y18. And again, move out about a quarter of an inch. So we've got a quarter of an inch of that second yellow in here, or the third yellow rather. And we just bring it around. When you're working um, at home, turn your work to make it easier to reach everything. Um, because I'm filming, I'm trying not to move it too much so that you can see what I'm doing. But if I were doing it just for myself, I'd be turning my work just to make it easier to get at it. Okay, so we'll bring it down here into the water. And then, of course, we're going to come back with our Y15 and we're going to go over that join. So you can see how that starts to blend those colors together those yellows are blending so it's not quite as obvious those steps between the yellows are not quite as obvious when we come back and we blend them together all right and if you wanted to you can go right back in with the very first one and blend it right down okay now it's a bit strange because we used a y18 but now now i'm going to skip to a y17 and for some strange reason the y17 is a lot more intense than the 18. so even though it looks like i'm, I'm using them backwards as you can see here it's, it is quite a bit darker so that's why it's the next in line always test your colors it's a good idea to make a color chart so that you can see what the actual color of the marker is rather than just looking at the lid because that doesn't always tell you what exactly the color is okay so again into the reflection now the reflection as you can see here this looks like a really big rainbow kind of arc that i'm doing here around the sun the shape of the sun the reflection is more um flat like a, an oval and that's because of the perspective that you're looking at so we're looking across the water whereas we're looking up at the sky so keep this kind of a little bit more flat a little bit more oval than you would the sky which is much more circular and that'll give you um, a better perspective and you'll be able to tell that that's um, two different sort of planes so we've got the sky behind and we've got this water in front all right so back to the y18 just to blend those together And then our next color is the YR12. So we're moving now into the oranges. YR is yellow, red. And we're going to apply that in the same way. So again, about a quarter inch and work your way out. 
And once you finish with the YR12, of course we go back to our Y17 and we blend. And this is the process for all the colors that we're using. So it's add the color and then come back and blend. So next color in our list is the YR15. So our oranges are getting a little bit more intense. Right, that was the YR15 and again blend. Now if you notice or you stop to have a look and you notice there's definite lines in the work that you're doing, make sure you come back in with the, those colors and blend them out. So don't leave any definite lines. Come back in and just blend those colors until they, the transition is a little bit more gentle. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. You don't need it to be exactly, um, you know, an exact line. You don't want it to be an exact line. You do want to leave some of that texture still in um, in your work. That gives that sort of appearance of irradiating sunlight. Okay, so we were up to the YR15. Now we're going to the YR68. So we're really intense orange now. As we bring this around, we're actually hitting the edge of the box that we've drawn. That's okay, go over the edge so that you're not leaving any white spaces. And we just continue coloring. That will all be trimmed away later on, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so bring this nice intense color around. Now we're almost finished with the bottom. So we're running out of space down here but there's still this top part of the sky up here. So we want to make sure we color all the way to the top of the box. So that's our 68. And we're going to come back in with the 15, the YR15 to blend. And you can actually see on the back how much color that we're using. Okay. So there's quite a lot. All right. So the next after the YR68, we're into the reds. This is the RO5. Now we don't really need to apply any along the sides anymore because we've hit the edges already, unless um, you've got a little bit more room. So we might bring just a little bit in around there and then along the top. All right, and then we're gonna bring the 68 back in to blend. Work that up into the red. And RO8 is next. Back to our RO5 to blend. And then we're getting to the very last colors now. So we're in the home stretch. And that's our R37, which is a very uh, dark red. And back to our RO5, no, nope, our RO8, I beg your pardon, RO8, to bring those colors together. And then our final color is the R39, which is the darkest of the reds that we're using. And we're going to make sure that we take that right to the top. sure that you add enough pigment so that you're not seeing any of the paper through that color and then bring in the R37 again to blend take that all the way through so we're blending those two colors together nicely all right oh, oh, I think we stopped doing some of our work at the bottom all right so we were let's see I think we were here in the reds Add a little bit 
bit of the eight. And do a bit of blending. Oranges. Right. So that's the sunset and the reflection in the water. Now, what we want to do is to distinguish between the sky and the water. So that's the next step. Let me move all these out the side. So grab a black pen. So this is a, a 100. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush tip to create the waves. Now this does take a little bit of practice. What you need to do is you need to use this, the tip of the marker. You can see that it comes up to a nice point. If you drag that along gently on, on its point, it gives you a very thin line. If you apply some pressure, it'll give you a thick line. So what we're going to do to create the, the texture of waves is to alter between alternate between those two lines. So we start up on the tip, very light pressure, and then as we move, we press, and then we come back up on the tip. So we're getting these alternating lines between thick and thin, and you can make them small, you can make them thinner, you can make them long, you can double them up, but that gives you the texture of the water. We're going to use black because that will give us that contrast. It's the, when the sun is is right there behind the image, because the sun is so bright, it basically takes the color out of everything else. So that's what we're going to play with. We're going to first of all, we're going to start with the island here. We need to add just a little bit more on this side to make the image even. Then I'm going to turn it. Those lines that we drew for our horizon earlier, that's where we're going to start with a very thin line. So just a little line, a little broken line is fine, but just draw in that line. And that's going to give us the horizon for the water. It doesn't matter if it's a bit wobbly. It's In fact, it's better if it is a little bit wobbly because it gives the idea that that's water. That's not going to be a crisp line. That's, that's different waves and things. Now, back here near the island our waves are going to be or they're going to appear smaller so we want to keep them quite quite fine so don't press too hard on your marker and don't make them exceedingly long just keep them kind of small and we want most of these dark waves off to the sides so this area in here they will have some but not quite as many because the sun is sort of most of that light is coming forward this way. So we want some of these waves in that area, but not quite as many as off to the sides. So I'm just using my marker to add little fine waves in those areas. And as I work forward this way, those waves is going to start getting bigger because as the person looking at this picture, my position is here. So anything that's closer to me is going to appear to be larger and that's how you get a bit of perspective in your drawings so down here this is my bottom line this is where the waves are going to be the largest so that's where I'll be adding the most pressure on my pen so this is as big as they're ever going to get and this is as small as they're going to get and that gives you that depth that that idea that you're looking at a distance it's not just um, a flat picture Okay, so we have our nice big waves here at the front. And then as you work backwards, the waves will gradually get thinner. And remember, we're going to keep most of those waves to the sides. So I'm just going to fill in a little bit here in the middle. We do want a few and you want them all different. So make sure you just sort of dot in a few small ones as well. The water is relatively calm and then most of our waves, most of the dark is going to be off to the sides. And you can see how just by applying that, that texture, that little bit of black marker, that it gives the idea that we're looking at water and not at the sky. So even though it's not the colour of water at all, we're looking at the reflection from the sky. 
few little bits there around the horizon and if you want to you can even extend some of the waves that are around the island to make it look like it's sort of lapping there at the beach but that's basically it so now we can just remove our mask this will be the, the sun underneath here so it's, you can see it's really nice and, and vividly bright and we have the sun setting behind our little tropical island if you want to you can even add in some birds or clouds or things like that but that's ready to go on our card what i'm going to do is to make this up and i will post a picture of my completed card with a, a sentiment and all that sort of thing on my blog in the next couple of days i just wanted to show you um, a quick video of how you can do that and how you can get that uh, water in so that it still has those those same beautiful colors if you have any questions about the tutorial feel free to send me an email uh, you can head over to the blog and leave a comment over there if you want to know something or you want, just want to make a comment, that's fine. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you'll stick around for another video that I'm going to be making a bit later on with the same set using the pine trees. The set again is called Treescapes and it's available over on the Becky's Place online store. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.